Now, tomorrow's launch will happen on the same launch path that sent the Apollo missions in the late 60s and early 70s. 12 men made history during those flights by walking on the moon. Today, only four of those men are still alive. One of them is Charlie Duke. Our Meg Ferris sat down with him to talk about those historic missions and the future. Hey, John, I'm gonna take that sample SCB number two, my camera, and I'm heading home. Okay. Boy, is this fun. When your travels have taken you to the moon and back, literally, where do you travel for leisure? while well, Apollo 16 astronaut Charlie Duke meets with friend Ken Stage in Sportsman's Paradise. He likes to fish, I like to fish, and uh, Barataria Bay, and this is Joe's Landing, is really a place to push out from, and so here we are. And Charlie Duke never goes back home to Texas empty-handed. With the help of charter captain Craig DeGrees, and of course, Mother Nature, he takes with him a catch that's out of this world. So before he went out to catch fish, we wanted to catch up with one of the only four moonwalkers left on planet Earth. And of course, while safely protecting the health of this American icon. You said you want to go back up. <laughs> well, I would, but NASA, you know, they're not, uh, Elon Musk is not going to let me go. And at 85, I don't expect a phone call from NASA saying, suit up. <laughs> Watching the recent SpaceX mission brought back memories of his 1972 return to Earth. Splashdown. Distance 5300 yards from expected flight. Sometimes you hit the water really, really hard, and that's why I call it crash down. My head was uh, out of position. I was looking out the window on Apollo 16 when we hit the water, and my head went back like that and uh, almost knocked me unconscious. And he says the recent SpaceX public-private mission was impressive and reminds us that back when he was flying, NASA wasn't building then either. It was all contracted out to private companies. I'm really excited about the future, and I think Elon Musk will be taking tourists into space before too long, and that's going to really, really stimulate the interest, I think, of the uh, general public in, uh, in space travel with the beauty that they're going to be seeing. Last year, the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11 brought back memories. Duke was the CAPCOM, or capsule communicator, for that mission. He is the sigh of relief voice you hear from Mission Control talking to Neil Armstrong, who only had seconds of fuel left before the first lunar landing. Listen, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Uh, it was so dynamic and so uh, tense because of the problems we de that developed as we continued that descent. And several times we almost called an abort. Charlie Duke was the backup lunar module pilot for the ill-fated Apollo 13. An oxygen tank explosion kept it from reaching the lunar surface. But before that drama played out on TV, there was another behind-the-scenes drama. He is the reason Ken Mattingly was pulled from the mission three days before launch. Prime crew was uh, Lovell, Hayes, and Mattingly. But I caught the measles and exposed Mattingly to the measles, and they jerked him off and st stuck in Jack Swigert, who I trained with. Mattingly later flew with Duke on Apollo 16. But Charlie was again at the center of some drama the day before that launch, too. He was in NASA quarantine. His identical twin brother was in town to watch the launch, staying at a Holiday Inn. But he walks out of his room, going towards the bar, and there's this NASA executive sitting there, and they called out the NASA quarters and said, we saw Duke at the Holiday Inn. Well, no, sir, you didn't. He's standing right here. That's my twin brother you just met. So say hello to him. His name's Bill. <laughs> and on the nearly 239,000-mile trip to the moon, he turned on a country music cassette a DJ friend recorded for him. And there was a surprise. The first one was, uh, hey, Charlie, this is Porter Wagner and Dolly Parton. And uh, we want to thank you for taking us to the moon. And uh, we got 30 minutes worth of songs and jokes for you. 
And so it's the whole show was just for us. He reminds us that our cell phones today have 800,000 times more memory than his okay. Apollo spacecraft. And as he autographs his landing spot on a moon globe for a baby boomer fan, Nancy, he reacts to the Pentagon recently releasing videos of UFOs that defy physics as we know it. And I don't believe we're being visited by uh, civilizations from out there uh, hundreds of thousands of light years away. I'm convinced that God is a creator, has created life here on Earth. And if he created life out there on another planet, he hadn't told anybody about it. Meg Farris, Eyewitness News. Tomorrow's SpaceX launch is set for 6.49 p.m. our time. The Crew Dragon is scheduled to dock at the space station at 3.20 Sunday morning. Always exciting.